spider. Yeah, and that's the spider. You've heard of the story? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. You're looking at Anansi there. That's what they were trying to show you in these stories. The hand purposely set like that. But if you look at the third ventricle, can you see the seat? Can you see it? So therefore, Prometheus must be tied right here. If we look at the image. Can you see it? So therefore, this is what the doctor was just showing you, right? Mm. What does that say? That's Prometheus tied to the rock. Because this is where the fire is. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm. Prometheus tied to the rock, that's why I said to you, what does he look like? He like when they, our ancestors saw they said he looks like a spider. So we came up with stories like the Anansi story to tell to our children that when they get of age, we can tell them what Anansi really meant. But we didn't do that, we just taught them the story because we forgot the true meaning of it. So when we see Prometheus tied up to the rock, this is Prometheus tied up to the rock. How did Prometheus get free? He got free by the 13th generation of Ayo's descendants. Mm. Only 13, and what does say 13 mean? The fire that he brought to men, and Zeus chained him up on the rock for his punishment. Mm. Do you understand? Okay, let me go further. So therefore, somebody else knew it, because somebody drew Prometheus now released from the body, as the body's been rotten and going back into the elements, the spirit, psyche, is released. Is that dying? Sorry? That's how they're dying. I'm a tricky, so I know. So when you're being with me, what are you doing? Manifesting matter from one place to another. Yeah, Transmitting. Yeah, yeah. But why would you design it like the crystal gallery? I mean, come on. Why would you have that design it? That's the original part of the crystal gallery there. Can you see the holes in it? Mm. <laughs> then what I'm saying? Who's the seven ray god? The seven ray god is Serapis because there's seven letters in his name. I to people, everything is the macrocosm and the microcosm. The physiology and the astrology of man, when you're discussing it in the Bible, this is why we get confused. Because you don't know if you're discussing astrology or physiology. You can't separate one from the other. So when you look at the Hyades and Tartarus, right down here, what do you see? Pallades. But Pallades is in your scriptures. He asked Job, can thou bring forth the Pallades? What does the Pallades, what effect does the Pallades have on my, my psyche? <clears throat> can thou bend, bind the sweet influence of what? Pallades, or loosen the bands of Orion? Christians don't want to answer this. Because what you're looking on here is mythology. In your scriptures. How is it not mythology? What does the word Orion mean? Where is that from the Bible, sir? Say that again. Where is that from the Bible? This is in um, Job 38.9, Job 9.9, 9, and it's in Amos 5.8. So therefore, the Pallades and loosen the bands of Orion. Then he's saying to Job, canst thou bring forth the Mazareth? But what is the Mazareth? It's the Zodiac. It's the Jewish word, the Mazareth. This is why the book that you got a few years ago, Justin, what was that book called? The Sefer Yitzirah. Yes. The Sefer Yitzirah is the book of the Zodiac. <laughs> Do you understand? That's what it's, it, what, what it's dealing with is correspondence to the Zodiac. That's all it is. So can thou bring, and this is the Jewish, one of their most prized possession book. So therefore, can thou bring forth the Maserah in his season? Or can thou guide Octorus with his sons? Let me read this because this is the last time I'm going to read this again. Knowest thou the ordinance of heaven? He's asking a question according to their scriptures. So God is saying, can you do or do you understand all of these things? Then at the end he asks the question, knowest thou the ordinance of? He's saying, do you know how the planets move? Do you know how they affect the psyche? Do you understand it? Job, he's asking them. So I'm saying, if this is mythology, what is, it, what is it doing in your scriptures? Because what you're looking on here is Greek mythology. 
but you're trying to convince me that this is God speaking to someone. Do you understand? So therefore, if it's not morphology, then the Greeks wouldn't show you this picture or, uh, uh, of a, I think this is Hercules anthropomorphized in the stars. This is from the book, The Hermetica. What does it say? Few can escape their faith or guard against the terrible influence of the zodiac. For the stars are instrument of destiny, which bring all things to pass in this world of men. If, however, the rational part of a man's soul is illuminated by a single ray of atun, light, the working of these gods is nothing, for all gods are powerless before the supreme light. So what does this mean? Yeah, this, yeah thanks. Then it goes on, Orion in the 19th century. Orion current names derived from the Greek mythology. Arrived from what? Greek mythology. So if Orion arrives from Greek mythology, then there's mythology in your Bible. These stars, and this is what I was showing you in the book of Aratus, when I was showing you the book of Aratus, for those of you who've got it. This is what he was singing to. They all knew this knowledge. So therefore, I think it's impertinent for the Muslims to say nobody knew about it, and if the Quran didn't come out, we wouldn't know about it. We all we knew about these things a long time ago. Do you understand? And I'll show you that we did. Because the Khoi Khoi people in South Africa, who are some of the oldest people on your planet, let's see what some of their traditions were. What does it say here? When the Pallades appear in the East, little ones are lifted up by their mothers and presented to the stars. You saw that in Kunta Quente, in Roots. When his baby was born, he lifted it up to the star. Why were we doing that? What was that tradition about? What does you see here? What is, it, what is he blowing? Isn't this what the Jews do? When you see them blowing that horn, don't you know they stole your tradition? The secrets that you have to understand. You can't just say they're mythology, so they're myths, because there's secrets in the myth. You understand? So the stars, the Pallades, are considered friendly, and the children are taught to stretch their hands towards them. But when do these stars make an appearance in England? Anyone know? Mike. The Koi Koi are called the rain stars, because after that, that's when we come into the rainy season. Appearance indicates the rainy season near the thrust beginning of the new year. Hands. Sorry, that's the reference here. When rain is accompanied by light, lightning, girls who are out in the open become killed by the lightning and are converted into stars. Therefore, young unmarried women and girls must hide themselves from the rain. After sunset, the sun travels back to the east over the top of the sky and that the stars are small holes which let the light through. Others said that the, the sun is eaten each night by a crocodile and that it emerged from the crocodile each morning. This is in their history. But I've already showed you time ago when we had the black goddess, even if for those of you who are reading the Hermetica, it will show you that our representation of the night sky was the body of the black female. And then we, point, we put stars in her body and we said the rough is born through her every morning. Isn't that the story? So therefore, they have the same symbol. But who is eating the sun? Who? Set. That's correct. So Set eats the sun. In this symbolism alone is the confusion between Jesus, the sun, and Set, or who became Satan. It's, it's the morphology that they see in the skies that they brought down and they're teaching it to you in the Bible. This, these are always things that's been in our history. This is nothing new. Do you understand? So therefore, when we look on Newt, why did we use the black woman's body to represent the night sky? Why did we do that? What was the significance of it? That's the story. Here is a saw in the tree. You understand? That's why we have to know symbolisms. And that's why years ago when I was teaching you, I was teaching the Hebrew and I went, you remember when I said Ein, Zof, Er? And I went, it spelt the first word is Asa. So therefore, Asa is in the tree. Where did she go? She went to a king to get his body or the coffin release. What's Malkut? Malkut's called the kingdom. 
So the stories are wrapped up in this tree of life. Now look, what's this glyph here? What's this glyph? This glyph? Okay. Now, this is not a glyph testing, but I know you know your glyphs. What do you notice about those glyphs? Each one of them have a cross on it. Can you see the cross? Can you see the cross? Can you see the cross? Every one of them, apart from the moon and the sun. Why is there a cross, the symbol of the cross on these glyphs? No? Thousands of years before you'll know a story, the Greeks had the story. The, if we go into Egypt, where is the story? What was the name of his wife? Can somebody pronounce that? Pera. Pera. Go and research this way. Rain stopped full, the clouds cleared up away, the blue sky and the golden sun came out overhead, the waters began to shake, very fast, run off from the land, the sea, every day, blah, blah, blah. Go and read the story of the Cadian. You can take his name and you can do more research on it because, like I said, the stories, they're a bit longer than what I'm showing you. Okay. <laughs> you get me? What's the first vertebra in the human body? What's it called? The first vertebra in the human body is called atlas. Do you understand? So if you look on it here, the cervical or neck segment of the spine is comprised of seven vertebrae. So when we read Manly P. Hall's book and we read about the atlas, what does it say about the atlas? It says, it is interesting to note that the atlas is the upper vertebra of the human spine upon which the condyles of the skull rest. So on the first vertebra is where the condyles, the condyles are a place where bones slip in. What's the longest bone in the body? Yeah, what they call it? Survival, what they call it? You said it, I think. Femur. Yeah, the femur. Yeah? So the femur is the longest bone in the body. So when you see skull and bones, which two bones do they have cross? The femur bones, correct? So therefore, if you look at the femur bones, the femur bones are connected by condyles that connect into the hip. Able, so you're able to walk. So therefore, he's basically saying the skull is connected to the condyles of Atlas, right? So in the brain there are numbers of caves, ventricles, and folds, and in them, according to the Eastern legends, live the wise men. So they're saying within these caves and these folds live certain people, the wise men, the yogis and the hermits. The caves. I just told you the skull is called a rock. So what does the Petrus part of the temporal bone mean? Petrus means Peter. Yeah. Well, what's this got to do with anything? When you deal with the human body. So I'm saying, why is there a side of the brain that separates the left and the right hemisphere of the brain? And this is what I showed you when I showed you the crystal galley the, that is attached to the flux through this section. So the brain is, has a side of it. So you see Father Time with the side, because I told you that Peter, or the Petrus bone, connects the, the temporal bone. The temporalis means Saturn, or time, and time is Saturn. What does Kali mean? Kali means time. When you look at Kalima, Kalima deals with time. That's why she's jet black. Is that the sun? Mm -hmm. That sits within the human brain? Tell me I'm wrong, because you can't, because medically I could show you that. And that's why I said to you on the tree of life, why do all of them have to cross? All you have to do is put something like that and you get one of the glyphs. That's four hills that sits right dorsal towards in your brain. Obviously I can't show it to you, but these things are on the brain stem, on the brain stem. And we have to keep venerating our scholars and our elders because a lot of us don't know who they are. You go outside today and you show up to a lot of people, black people in the street, who this is? They haven't got a clue. Do you understand what I'm saying? I've asked them, do you know who Khalid Muhammad is? And they're like, who Khalid who?